Doesn't fit perfectly, but it fits. And it's also got no handle. Which is fucking sick. The woman in the shop was like, this hasn't got a handle. And I was like, I need it. You haven't got one with a handle, it's fine. I'll take it. Thank you. Bonne chance. Today, we're cooking steamed fish, ladies and gentlemen. I've got the wok on. I've got a beautiful, beautiful, sustainably caught line sea bass. Hassan sized fish. Wasn't caught in a bad way. Lived a beautiful fishy life. Now it's going to get steamed to perfection. And we're gonna love it and caress it. Um, so I once had tonsillitis. I suffer from tonsillitis three times a year. And my girlfriend made me steam fish to make me feel better. And ever since, hook sold, line and sinker, fish pun, you get me? So, it's a very, very basic dish. I know this setup looks intimidating, right? But I'm in my garden. All you need is a wok, a steamer, and something to heat some oil up in. Uh, if you don't have a wok, you can do this on papillot in a piece of parchment paper with all the ingredients inside, little dressing, and it goes to the oven. But we're gonna go traditional. I ran and bought a wok and a lid that doesn't have a handle, but we'll work our way around that. And we're just going to make, for me, what's a very clean tasting dish that even on a murky day like this in Edmonton, it's just something that you wanna fucking eat. Firstly, got some ginger. Now, people often refer to ginger as thumb sized pieces, yeah? I've got quite big thumbs and I'm measuring all the way down to this bit. I'd say that much ginger, because we're gonna stuff the cavity of the fish and we're also gonna have some for garnish after. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take these knobbly ends off, because they're harder to peel with them on. So I'm left with like a thumb-sized piece. I'm grab a spoon. The easiest way to peel a piece of ginger without breaking it down and losing its juices is to do it with a spoon and just scrape it. Just like that. Scrape it back. We're going to julienne this piece of ginger which means like little battens um so we're just gonna slice it down nice and thin stack these bits of ginger up on top of each other and it just makes it easier for us to cut right so ginger stacked up nice and thin i wouldn't grate this ginger even if you've cut it really badly and it's not thin and it's not beautiful it's still going to give you the flavor if you grate the ginger you're allowing the juice to come out and we don't want that to penetrate the fish. We want this to be able to steam in the fish's juices and create that flavor that runs all the way through. I've got some spring onions, right? Spring onions are a more delicate flavor, used a lot in Asian cooking. Take the tops off. So we're gonna split them into three. So we're gonna go, just as it starts to go green, one there, in the middle, one there. Stick these to one side. And now these bits, it's very anal, but we're just gonna split them down the middle so they can lay flat and then chop them in half. And we're gonna cut them the same way that we cut the ginger. It might look like this is strictly for aesthetics. We are gonna finish this steamed fish the way they do in Chinese restaurants, which is with hot oil over the top. Now, if your ginger and your spring onions are the same size, they're both gonna cook at the same time. Simple maths. I'm gonna put the spring onions down. Stick our ginger there as well. The final spring onions. Right, so now we're gonna move on to our fish, right? So we've got this big bad boy. And I know cooking whole fish is intimidating, um, but I've kindly asked my fishmonger to gut and scale my fish. Um, one of the most important things for this dish is in here, it's where all the fish's blood supply is, right? So when you get a fish from the fishmonger, they don't often break this line. What you need to do is give it a little cut in between each one and make sure you wash any of this blood out. The blood is gonna turn your fish bitter. And for this recipe, we want nice, clean flavors. So I'm just gonna give this a little rub out. Because this is such a, a bad boy, massive, huge, 800 gram fish, I'm gonna put some slits in it just so that it cooks evenly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift up this fin. I'm just gonna go down to the spine, right? And you'll feel it. Your knife won't go any further. 
down to the spine, straight down to the spine. I'm going to do one more here. So I've put more in the top end at a closer because it's a thicker part of the fish. And this, this part of the fish here, this segment, is the part that's going to take the longest to cook. We're going to flip it and we're going to mirror those cuts again. They don't have to be identical, they don't have to be perfect, but we need to know that the fish is going to cook equally and evenly on both sides, right? We need to think about what flavours we want to get in this to make it delicious. Now, the first thing this needs for me is salt. Season the cavity. Everyone forgets to season the cavity, but give it a nice sprinkle of salt, right? I'm going to go salt on the outside. Now, I've not put any oil or anything on this fish, doesn't need it. Just make sure it's got a generous bit of salt, even, even in these little flaps, a little bit of salt, a little bit more. So now we're going to move into stuff in the cavity. So we're going to take a couple of these spring onions, a nice handful of ginger, take some coriander. I'm not going to bother taking it off or ripping it in half or anything like that. I'm just going to stick it straight in like this, yeah? All it needs now is white pepper. Now, white pepper isn't as harsh as black pepper and it's used a lot throughout Asia. So I'm just going to give it a nice sprinkle. It's got a good hum to it. It's almost herby more than it is peppery. Flip the bad boy over and we're going to do the same with the salt and pepper. And again, we're going to go on with our white pepper, just like that. We're gonna move on to steaming our fish. Now, oh, I bought a wok and this thing that's not got a lid on, which is quite dangerous. Right, so I'm doing this in the traditional manner, right? So I've got some water in my wok, I've got a little steaming rack, and then my fish is gonna sit on this plate. However, if you don't have any of this shit at home, get yourself a piece of parchment paper, do exactly this process, Lay your fish on your parchment paper and fold it like an envelope and crimp the edges like you're in year four at school, right? That then goes into the oven. It does the same thing because the fish's steam itself allows it to steam. The heat from the fish allows it to do its thing, right? But we're going to go traditional. So we're going to steam on this little plate. These bits of white onion that I've kept, just going to stick down like this. And this is going to allow our fish to be elevated so that the steam can travel underneath, in and around, and get where it needs to get to. I'm gonna put a little bit of ginger on the bottom of the plate as well. And then these, part, these coriander stalks, I'll use these for garnish, but the stalks can sit there. And now we've given ourselves a little lift, right? Fish goes on, like so. And now this is gonna go into our wok and steam. Into the wok. Fuck, man. Now, right, this fish is a bit on the big side. It looks like what I look like in an average size bed. It's out the end, legs are hanging off, is what it is. With a lid, we're just gonna trap it in there, right? It's fighting back, look at it. It's on, leave it, don't touch it. We're gonna steam it. An average size fish, I'd say about six to eight minutes. I reckon that's probably going to take double. Right, so let's move on to our sauce. First thing we need to do, obviously, is flip our board because we've got all fishy guts on it. Now, we're going to take this adorable little pouring jug um, and we're going to go three tablespoons of soy sauce. I'm using Japanese soy sauce, Kickerman. Uh, it's a light soy. I quite like the flavour, it's not too salty. So that's three tablespoons of soy. Two tablespoons of shouting. This is rice wine. And this is going to give us an earthiness. It's almost like, what's that stuff that the old people drink? Sherry, it's almost like sherry. If you haven't got shouting, use sherry. Um, I'm sure everyone's got loads left over from Christmas every year because no one drinks it. And then we're going to go sugar, salty soy sauce, tangy shouting. We're going to go a tablespoon. 
of sugar. We're going to go the juice of a lime. Squeeze it to the end of its life. Get all the goodness out. No flesh, just juice. So we're just going to give this a little taste. And we want salty, sweet, acidic, clean flavours. In our saucepan, we're just going to use a neutral oil, uh, sunflower, veg. Um, and we're going to do, I'm not going to measure it in teaspoons. We're going to do one, two, three, four. You're going to count to four seconds on a gentle pour. You're going to turn your hob on. And we're just going to let this cart to heat and start smoking. And that's pretty much it, ladies and gents. Right, so we've been waiting about 12 minutes, I'd say. Um, whilst the fish was cooking, I've heated up my oil. It's at smoking point. Uh, let's check our fish and see where we're at. So look, the way, the way to test is take a chopstick or a skewer and you should be able to go all the way through the fish. A little bit of resistance when you get to the bone, but if it goes all the way to the bottom, you're good. Traditionally, that sauce gets thrown away, but why lose it? Come on, food gods. Come on. Hopefully this just slips right off. My brother. Right, so, take these last bits off. I know I said we weren't gonna eat them, but the added flavor, they've soaked up all the fish juice. So now, we're gonna go ginger. And our very anally cut spring onions. We're gonna pour our sauce over this now. So now we've got our sauce, we've got our fish juices that are gonna to mix together. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm excited. Our oil is just starting to smoke, yeah? We need our oil to be as hot as it can be so that we're not eating raw bits of ginger and any bit of skin that it touches is gonna go crispy and curl up. So, oil's piping hot. We're gonna go on top of our fish. So look, these little bits of spring onions, bled their flavor. Nice bits of ginger. I'm gonna go coriander over the top, just like that. Completely optional, but this stuff is cracked. So it's crispy chili flakes. Um, and it's got a really nice colorful oil that, if you look, it's a very deep red. So I'm just gonna go a little, just over the fish. So we've got a little bit of spice. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Chinese-inspired steamed fish. I know you want to fucking eat that. Let's eat it. It's like gelatinous, just, just cooked. But if you look at how moist this is, just flakes away, super wet. Just, just cook this one, it's worth it. Mad.